الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله I'm going to apologize right off the bat by saying that there's nothing I can really say in a five minute review about this movie. I'll try and sum up my feelings about the movie as quick as possible because I know there is much more for me to say about it. I could easily do an episode of Hollywood Beatdown for the film where I talk about every single scene and what I love about the film. I probably will, but instead let me keep it short and simple for the moment. And by short and simple I mean this is still going to be the longest horror movie review I've ever done. The Exorcist is tied as my favourite movie of all time along with the original Toy Story. Two completely different movies and two movies that sum up everything I love about movies in general. Toy Story I've probably seen more than any other film ever made. I love it so much because it's stuck with me ever since I was a kid and I can watch it over and over again. The Exorcist is the far superior movie of the two. The Exorcist works on a technological standpoint as well as a philosophical standpoint. As not just a movie, but as a piece of art, The Exorcist triumphs above every other film I've ever seen. A lot of people call Citizen Kane or The Godfather the greatest movie of all time. For me, I think it's The Exorcist. It's both a horror movie and not a horror movie. There are the balls to the wall creep out moments, but the majority of the film studies the effects of people who are all affected by seeing evil. The story of the movie is one many people already know. The film starts off with Father Marin, who's played by Max von Sydow. Father Marin is, of course, the exorcist, the person who the film's named after. We see him at an archaeological dig in Iraq. He encounters many strange omens, including weird items being found and other weird things happening around him. This all ends with him finding a statue of the demon Pazuzu, who isn't actually named in the movie. This scene is made to build up the atmosphere and tension. The grittiness of the scene is increased by the washed out colours, blistering red sun and excessive film grain. This scene is one of the best parts of the movie in my opinion because it sets up everything perfectly. We then go to Washington DC where we meet an actress called Chris McNeil who's played by Ellen Burstyn, her 12 year old daughter Reagan played by Linda Blair, her personal assistant Sharon who's played by Kitty Wynn, and the housekeepers who own the house that they're staying at. The housekeepers are barely in the movie although in the original book they have a much larger subplot. Chris starts to notice weird things around the house such as sounds coming from the attic and lights randomly going out. Reagan talks to a spirit through a Ouija board which then leads to the main plot of the movie. Reagan begins to swear, become violent and completely change in personality. After tons of medical examinations, nothing is found to be wrong with her. However, she starts to get worse, her face starts to become mutilated, her voice completely changes and she gets superhuman abilities. After realising that Reagan is most likely possessed, Chris turns to former Jesuit priest Father Karras for help. Father Karras, who's played by Jason Miller, is seen throughout the movie and we see him at the beginning become a psychiatrist after losing his faith. Father Karras agrees to simply take a look at Reagan from a psychiatric point of view. However, he agrees that things aren't right and starts to believe also that she may in fact be possessed. The majority of the film is about the people around Reagan reacting in very different ways to the horrors that they're seeing. Chris fears for her daughter's safety and just wants to see her back. Sharon fears for her own own safety, Father Karras thinks the whole ordeal is a test of his faith, and when Father Marin comes in to perform the exorcism at the end, he doesn't care about the girl, he just wants to face Pazuzu and win. It's going to be a little hard to break each down about the film, so I'm just going to stick to the most basic of things, starting with the acting. The acting in the film is, in my opinion, some of the best I've ever seen. Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair, without a doubt, the best people in the film and pretty much steal every scene they're in. Ellen Burstyn does a really good believable performance playing a woman who is scared and just wants her daughter back. She also has a lot of chemistry with Linda Blair at the beginning and they really feel like mother and daughter. Linda Blair's insanely good especially since she was only 13 when filming the movie. 
When she's possessed, all her lines are dubbed by Mercedes McCambridge, who gives a fantastic voice performance that's croaky, disgusting, and really fits the persona of the demon. Sadly, Linda Blair didn't really do anything large after the movie, after basically being blacklisted due to a cocaine incident that landed her in jail with three years probation. Jason Miller is also fantastic. He never overplays the character and gives a very subtle yet effective performance. The writing is of course the most talked about part of the movie. In 1974, The Exorcist actually became the first horror movie to ever be nominated for Best Picture. Sadly, it didn't win. However, it did win Best Adapted Screenplay. The film has a lot of twists and turns and you can never tell what horrific thing is going to happen next. Even the ending is kind of surprising. Surprising. Not extremely surprising, but still kind of surprising. The dialogue is probably my favourite part of the screenplay. The conversations are very realistic and aren't like many other movies from the time, especially horror movies. The sound design is literally phenomenal. It holds up 40 years later. It also won a much deserved Oscar. They used many unique techniques and used techniques that pretty much became commonplace in movies today. Many scenes where tension is meant to build up, you will have random sounds being used. They would record random things and pitch the sound around to make it sound more atmospheric. They even used a jar full of bees at one point. The direction of the film is also fantastic. William Friedkin really knocked it out of the park with this one. The film's really well shot and he managed to get the actors as terrified as possible by slapping them and even firing a gun on the set. The special effects in my opinion are another one of the best things in the movie. Everything looks real, everything from the spider walk to the head spinning around, it's really good. I watched the making of documentaries for the film and I still don't really know how they did it and they explained it all as well. The first time I watched the movie it terrified me. The film's horrific, disturbing and extremely atmospheric but Damn it, I loved every fucking second of it. The first time I watched it, I wanted to watch it as a horror movie. The second time I watched it, I wanted to watch it simply as a movie on its own. I looked at everything, analysed it, and it was at that moment I knew I would never see anything better than it. Every time I watch the film, it feels completely different. It doesn't scare me as much as it did, and that's really just because I don't let it. If I went into the movie wanting it to scare me, it probably would. According to William Malley, a real-life Jesuit priest and an actor in the movie, 80% of the events in the movie happened in real life. In fact, William Peter Blatty, the original author of the book and writer of the screenplay, even based the film on a true story. This, in my opinion, makes the film even scarier and even more unnerving. The Exorcist is not just a fantastic horror movie, but a fantastic movie. As I said, I have much more to say about this movie and I've probably already said way too much, but I can't help it. The 1970s were the decade where movies completely changed and The Exorcist is one of the movies that changed everything completely. I love this movie so much and there's nothing anyone could ever say that would change my mind. I give my favourite movie of all time, The Exorcist, an A++. However, ranking it out of 10, I'd probably give it something like 1 million out of 10.